Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. My guest today is Stephanie Speyer, and she is the creator of Muse Boards, which is something very different and very unusual. I had met her at a conference that I exhibited at, and she too, and I uh, was fascinated by this, and she uses the Muse method. She works with clients to capture their dreams, desires, and goals, and using her background as a creative professional with 35-plus years of experience as a graphic designer, she works with individuals, teams, and corporate executives to guide them and help them remember their purpose and their mission. The Muse Board is a powerful work of art that visually represents their vision and reveals the soul of the individual or organization. She says, I inspire you to see your visions your dreams, and your goals. Together, we anchor them in with a muse board. Let me help you remember who you truly are. So welcome, Stephanie. I have a whole bunch of questions for you, but welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Gail. I'm very excited to be here. Well, you know, I'm, uh, as I was reading, um, you know, what you had to say about a muse board, I wondered how that differed from a vision board? Well, it's interesting because um, I've been, I've been a journaler for years. I, I write in my journal. I've created vision boards and I have a lot of friends who create vision boards. And there's something that's very different about the uh, a vision board, a lot of times I think they become affirmation boards. We put on those boards what we want to create and it become it's more from our head and not really from our heart or our soul. Um, and I find that when I work with clients and they create a muse board, it's coming from a deeper place within them. And then because I am part of the process and I create the final product for them, their inner critic doesn't get to play. So their inner critic stays back with them and I don't have the same attachments to these images that they do. I just get to see who you are and reveal that to you. So that's what I think is the biggest difference. Well, I know you want to take us through an exercise, and um, you say, you know, that it works even if it's radio, so um, why don't we try that and see if our listeners uh, get through this, feel it, uh, and so forth. So what is the exercise? Perfect. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay, so this, I've never tried it on radio, so this will be fun. I did test it with a friend the other day, and um, so what I'd like you guys to do is to take a deep breath with me, just one deep breath. Just get settled in your chair. Now, is there a desire or a goal or an aspiration that you have that you would like to see created in your life or your business in the next six months? Imagine what that is. Picture it in your mind. And I'll let, let you have a minute to think about that. Yeah, I'm thinking about it myself. So I'm, Good. I did my breath and I'm thinking. So Good. we'll see how this manifests. <laughs> yeah. So you've got your, a lot of people they know right away. So you've got your desire or your goal. Now imagine when you have reached that desire. What is it going to feel like? How are you going to feel? And it could be that you feel empowered. You feel relieved. You feel on top of the world. Those are some of the feelings that people, joyful, some of the feelings that people have expressed. So get that feeling. Anchor that in to your brain. 
And now, once you have that feeling of what it's going to feel like when you reach that goal, look around your environment, wherever you are, whether it's your home, your office, even your car, if you're listening in the car, and see if there is uh, an image or an object or even a color that reminds you of that feeling that you will have. So it could be anything, just something personal to you. But if it's an object, see if it can be something that you can um, uh, see on, you know, periodically. So just see if you can find an object in your environment that reminds you of that feeling. And once you have that object. Now, every time you see it, you will associate that with the feeling that you're going to have once your goal is obtained. Now, you may, my friend who did this with me the other day, she was in New York, I'm in California. And she said, I'm moving these things to my desk. I'm going to have this here next to me as a reminder. They turned out, she told me they were some champagne flutes that were handmade. And this is a, a little example of how I work with clients. So I help you find that desire, that goal, and then we anchor it in with feeling, and then we find images that help to remind us. So as you go about your day and you come across that object or color or whatever it is that you have selected, see if it helps you remember, oh, that's right. This is my feeling. This is the thing that I'm working towards. So that's the process. That's interesting. I, uh, my emotion that came up was, um, even though I feel I am empowered, it still was a feeling of an empowerment if I accomplish this particular thing. And looking around my office, which is quite bizarre, my office is quite bizarre, uh, believe it or not, the thing I anchored on were, was, a, was a light that I use when I do my videos or webinars or any online kind of things that are visual. So I've got this huge light that's in back of my computer, and that's what I fixated on. So we'll see how all this works. <laughs> ah, fun. Yeah. yeah. So, so let me ask you then, when people do this, and, and hopefully they're successful at it, what do you see as the challenges they have with holding on to their vision or their goals? I mean, um, people can visualize these things and people can put this news board together, but sticking to it is a very difficult challenge for, for many people. Yes, you're right. I, um, in my own experience, <clears throat> I have, um, like I said, I'm a, a journaler. I write, um, I have for years, but what I have found is I write things down. I, put them in my journal and then I close that book up and I go on with life. And I, I think it's just normal as humans that we get busy and we forget. And it's so easy to forget, even if we have a really important um, desire of say growing our business, even, even that, you know, we go by <clears throat> through our day and we forget the bigger, the bigger why of what we're doing it for. And um, I think that is the biggest problem. Um, I have even written things on um, post-it notes and stuck them on my computer and little, you know, af affirmations or um, words that would, would trigger uh, a memory for me, but they, um, there's something about the imagery within a muse board that is completely unique to me, um, or to whoever does one that 
really resonates with them. The, uh, my experiences have been ama- the responses I've gotten. Oh my gosh, I have gotten so the the responses have been amazing. People are in tears, or and they they keep them right next to their computer or um, on the wall near their um, near their off uh, desk. And um, uh, one man who did it. It did it around his writing his book and um he he takes it with him when he works on his laptop wherever he is and so i i there's something really powerful about the images that uh remind us well you know it's interesting when i uh, started journaling and i started journaling because people told me to start doing it um i i started by saying the, the five things I was grateful for, you know, at the end of the day. And I was right, doing just fine. And then I heard that they should be different things. Well, I looked, and most of mine were, were the same. I would say the same three kept appearing all the time. I mean, I was grateful for my pets. I was grateful for my family. I was grateful for my friends. Uh, and then would come the experiences of the day. So... Uh, then I stopped journaling because I I couldn't think of five different things every day. And uh, then I started just keeping track of my activities. And I just write the major thing that happened in my day. So my journaling is so um, quick and so uh, static, let me say, that I don't do a great job of, um, of all of this. So wh- what do you see... Uh, of, as the importance of this. I mean, why is it so important to recognize and visualize the desires that we have? Is it because we lose our dreams or, or what is the reason for that? Well, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm a, a, a mom. I mean, my kids are now adults, but I, um, life gets in the way of our dreams and sometimes we forget them and our desires I really believe our desires are the the um, the calling of our soul to grow and to become different or or to expand our awareness or our 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 beings to to do more in the world and that's my vision for myself and um, desires are they're, they're interesting and they're tricky. And I I remember, um, really struggling with goal setting. So I shifted it to desires and dreams and aspirations because there was something about the word goal that must be some conditioning from my childhood that, that triggered me. So I, I, I'm recognizing that the desires are good things and they move me forward. They keep me going and they help me get out of bed in the morning. And, um, and I think it's so interesting that, I mean, for me, I forget them sometimes. Um, I, when I first, well, we go through our daily lives and, you know, that kind of takes over sometimes because there are crises we all go through. There are things that happen to us. There are emergencies that come upon us. So, you know, that kind of takes our dreams and puts them in the back pocket for a while. So, uh, I certainly get that, you know, and especially as women, we tend to be the caretakers, the, we, we are the, you know, the people in the house that are making things to, you know, keep moving forward and, and keep it all together. And, um, a lot of times, I mean, I know for myself that I put a lot of my dreams and my, uh, aspirations on the back burner until my kids were raised until my, you know, work got taken care of and groceries were purchased. And, and many, many times I would lie in bed at night and go, okay, well, I've done all the things I needed to do, but uh, there was something in my soul that was felt like something was missing. And I never could put my finger on it until I could really visualize it in, um, and, and that's why these muse boards have been so powerful, especially, um, I find them work really well and they, they just anchor it in for me. I, it becomes my anchor. 
You know, I think that's great. I, I, I was such a different personality. I have to say that because um, I, I kind of always was, always was career oriented. And, you know, I've worked since I was 13 years old and now I'm 80 <laughs> and I'm still going strong. And uh, uh, I've just never lost that. And so I was fortunate that I was married to a man who said, great, <laughs> go for it, you know, and I had a business when I did get married. And uh, so, and he had two children who I raised along with my son, our son. And, um, you know, so he was always there as the stable influence in the home. And I was always out running around doing my thing. And I traveled a lot too. So all of this, you know, so I was very lucky because I got to see 50 countries. I worked in 50 countries. I worked in 49 states. It was just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life. And now here I am alone because I'm widowed 10 years now. And um, I have my cat who is going to the vet with me today. Uh, and, um, you know, I, it, it's real. And my son called yesterday and said, now, when are you coming back to San Diego? And can you babysit, you know, his dog? Because, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, so because they want to go on a trip. So it's it's really uh, an interesting phenomenon. And that's why I think this is so interesting for our listeners, because I'm sure some of them are like me and, and going strong in all these uh, directions. And some are like you who kind of had to you know, hide your dreams for a while. Mm -hmm. So you say that having the images on a news board helps us remember. And why do you think that works better than affirmations or writing things on post-it notes and sticking it on your screen? You know, I, I, I know what you're talking about because I could have notes everywhere and look right through them and not see them. So how come the news board is better for us in that manner? Well, I'm, I'm not sure if it's better, but I find that it works in a different way. Um, and, and because this is radio and I, I am such a visual person, so I'm, I'm really used to showing people things. Um, I will kind of describe a little bit about what a muse board looks like, and then people can always go to my website. The um, muse board is made up of a collection of images that, um, that you choose that are yours. They're unique to you. And um, I guide you through that. And what happens is I find that because it's not one image that we look at over and over and over uh, repetitively for, you know, days on end, same with whatever's written on a post-it note, um, the different, the, like uh, uh, the collection of images are powerful. But then what, what I find that happens is when I look at my muse board for them in, you know, say, every day, I'll look at it one day and see one image and that really pops out for me. And that reminds me of a feeling, a certain feeling, and it could be more than one feeling. And then the next day, it might be a different image that, that presents itself in a stronger way. And, and I know it's hard to describe it, but you kind of, I think you kind of get the feeling of what I'm trying to describe. It's, it's that, you know, you look at a collection of images and you will see something. It could be a color. It could be the shape. It could be the actual whole, um, you know, visual image. And, and it, it, it just reminds me in a different way. And it, cause it's a different enough thing. It's not the same thing every single day, which is what I think happens in our brains to, um, to gloss it over. So, you know, you see the same words on the post-it note and after a while it becomes blurry. We don't see it because it's the same thing. We, yeah, yeah, I know. I know what that is. You know, your, your brain kind of does, does that. Um, so are you changing the news board all the time? Is that the idea of it? Oh no, it's not that it's changing. It's just that at first glance, something, one image may stand out more than another. And it's a, it's a collage of the images that the person selects. Um, and, and many times I ask them to select a lot of different images and then I don't always use them all, but that they are, that it's their images and they, um, are connected to them. It's the, they, they've got an emotional 
connection with these images. So, so when they look at it, you know, something just stands out to them more than another image. And that's, I think why it's a, um, a little different or works differently than the same thing over and over again. Every time you look at it, even though it's the same, it doesn't change. Although I think that's an interesting idea. <laughs> it, um, <laughs> well, you know, I have to tell you that when, when I was in the booth, you know, almost next to you, yeah. and I saw your board, um, of course, I didn't realize what it was because it wasn't my board, but um, it was just lovely. It was just flowed. It was just so beautiful. And I thought to myself, oh, <laughs> what it did for me looking at your board was that it, kind of relaxed me because it was just so beautiful. Now, I'm not sure I could ever create anything like that, but uh, it was, it was just so beautiful. I thought, wow, that makes a, that makes a, a big difference. So uh, where did you come up with the idea for muse boards? Huh. Um, I, uh, I have a background in graphic design. I'm uh, I've been a graphic designer my whole life. Um, I just didn't know what it was until I was uh, about 25 years old. Um, I uh, got my degree in design and I have worked with clients. And over the years, I would ask my clients to, and this is, you know, before computers, I would ask them to go through magazines or catalogs and find images that inspired them. And they'd pull them out and they'd hand them to me and I'd look at them. And, and I could, I, for whatever reason, this is just me, I could read who they were or are through their images. And it would help me. It would inspire me. I could go, oh, look at this. This is interesting. And um, about six years ago, I was working with a friend who hired me to design a rebrand for a a client in San Francisco, and I did not meet the client. And as we were working along um, on the project, they handed my friends handed me a bunch of information about the client that they had gained. And I looked at all that and I couldn't see her. So I ended up going to her Pinterest page and getting an idea of who this woman is. And from that, I decided I'm going to put together this collage of images so, you know, it will inspire me. And I found colors through there also. Um, and then I showed it to my friends who were running the project, and they were like, oh, my gosh, we, got to, we have to set, show this to her. So we did, and it, it, it's what sold the project. As soon as she saw that board, she just started crying because we saw who she was and that's where it started. And then from there I started doing it for other clients and they just, and now I'm pretty much doing muse boards all the time. It's, it's really my passion. Well, I'm going to stop you there. It's the uh, end of part one for us and we'll be back with Stephanie uh, after our break. So stay with us. <laughs> 